Hey Nathan, this is one of the cars I'm the most interested in driving. How about you? Yeah, well this is one of the most important cars for Chevrolet because it's really their first big step into a huge pool of electrification. It's the 2024 Chevy Equinox EV and we are here at the 2023 Denver Auto Show. Yeah, and we're gonna give you a walk around and we're gonna kind of pick the coolest and funnest and most interesting cars to highlight. And I'm glad we're starting here because this is a big car, right, for Chevy. It starts at about $30,000. Right. It's a, you know, a good size crossover. It's kind of the heart of the market. Right. And yet they're making it, you know, available at $30,000, which is pretty incredible. That, that is indeed. And then on top of that, it does have up to a 300 mile range. You can get all wheel drive with it. it can hold five people. It's a lot larger than our current uh, Chevrolet electric car, your favorite. The Bolt. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah, a little dinky and not pretty. This is a totally different story. So this is sort of Chevy's first step. And while we're here at the show, we're gonna cover some other electric vehicles, uh, hybrids, uh, some big beefy trucks, you name it. It's all here at the show and we're gonna hit it. So. Yeah, you know, the cool thing about this is I believe you can get it in front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or all wheel drive. It's something like that. You certainly can get an all wheel drive variant with it, but I believe that you, the best range you get is with the two-wheel drive. Uh, two drive, yeah. And this is the RS version. What do you think of the design? I think it's pretty, I, yeah. I really do. I wish they didn't use the name. I wish they used a different name for it, like uh, the Nathan. The Nathan, <laughs> all right. Bulky, yet awesome. Well, we're here uh, during the public day, so we'll be people walking in and out, but that's cool. I mean, that's what this is about, right? Right, well, we decided to, to, to make sure that this is during senior lunchtime, which is where Roman gets discounts, <laughs> and we can get in here and move them if we need to. All right, speaking of, <laughs> yeah. what do you think of the Equinox? Um, They've upped their interior, but they're still not quite there yet. I think that, um, honestly, I think Ford might have a little bit more of a comprehensive design. I'm just not a big fan of the sea of black, neither is Roman, but there's a lot less material that you'll get sticky with your fingers, right? The center screen, which I believe is around an eight inch, not too bad. The overall controls and the fact that there's a actual gear lever I think is awesome. So here's the crazy part, right? Uh, this as tested is the RS, it's $38,000, starts at 32. The electric version, which I'm betting is gonna be quicker. Oh yeah. It's gonna be roomier, right? Yes. And it's gonna be cheaper. Well, that's what General Motors is trying to do right now. And they're in a bit of a pickle because they're in between two spots. Internal combustion vehicles, they're not going away anytime soon. And they know it, but at the same time, they've made this promise that they're shifting an awful lot of their vehicles to EV. I'm gonna go shut the door. Be a conscientious showgoer, huh? All right, let's keep going. We'll keep going down the Chevy aisle here. Uh, and this is the uh, car podcast. So if you see a few trucks in the background, ignore them. Yeah, th this that's is, Andre's world. Yeah, nothing to worry about there. And Andre, he's no longer a concern today. <laughs> he's actually he's, yeah. he's actually driving the Colorado uh, ZR2 from uh, Vegas to Reno. That's why he's not here. Now, actually, we drove this yesterday. Uh, it's a new Corvette. This color is astonishing. I love the color. We, we did an old versus new, so we took our C5 and we compared it to the C8. <laughs> now, which one do you think was quicker? Gee, I wonder. Drag race? I wonder. <laughs> how, how fast do you think it went? I'm going to do a little bit of spoiler. How, it, at a mile above sea level, how fast do you think it went? Quarter mile. Quarter mile? Yeah. This? Yeah, take a guess. 11. 12.8. Okay, see, I was trying to give it love, yeah. uh, but still it's really fast. Yeah, I know, at a mile above sea level. But if it were electric, it would go faster. Well, the ironic is that the E-Ray, which is half electric, is gonna be the quickest of the Corvettes, even quicker than the Z06. Hey, you made fun of this car, please yeah. don't. <laughs> what? What's wrong with the Bolt? The Bolt is a very good uh, vehicle from where it stands. In terms of simplicity, the basic necessities are all covered. Tommy likes it, which is huge, and you know, it's a very inexpensive electric vehicle. It's one of the least expensive on the market, but it's the old architecture that's underneath here, which some people have an issue with. There's no all wheel drive variant on this one or the, um, is this the EV, EUV version? No, it's over there. Okay. You're, you're one so over. The, oh, there, yeah, okay. So hey, anyway. So, so we just did a video. Yeah. This to me is the biggest surprise of the year of any car we bought. So Nathan and I did what we're calling the world's toughest EV range test. And we yeah. took the Bolt, compared it to the Tesla Model 3, right. uh, compared it to the EV6 GT, and compared it to the Volvo Recharge. Yeah, the uh, XC40. We, we took it up and over, get this guys, go over to altfl.com if you wanna watch it. We took it over four mountain passes, and which car won that? This car. The, 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 Not by a huge margin. <laughs> so, so we bought ours for 28. Yeah. It qualified for a $10,000 credit. Is that combined? Yeah, seven okay. and a half federal, two and a half state. So this could be 
a $17,000 electric car. Depending on where you are in a tax bracket or, and everything else. Or, um, or you. Yeah. Let me yeah. show you something else unique about it's, this car. I, I will give it a lot of credit in terms of its efficiency. They're actually kind of quick, too. Let me show they're, you. they're perfectly good cars. It's so, just so I don't like the look. This is the weirdest thing, right? Yeah. It's got these lights over here, these parking lights, right? Yeah, these, that's these the brake lights. lights. And, yeah. You know why they're down there? Because the hatch. Yeah, exactly. Nathan knows his, his automotive world. Because if Is, is I, it going to let you open it? Probably I, not. I don't, well, maybe it's down here. Yeah. So if, okay. if they were there... Yeah. and you opened them up, then you couldn't see them. That's correct. So the way that Audi handles that is they put a second set of lights in here. Inside. The way that Chevy did it was they put the lights way down low. Yeah, and it, it looks a little strange, and I don't think it's, it's not the best, but third brake light, which has been mandated for years and years and years, tends to take care of a lot of that. So. All right, shall we say goodbye to the dearly departed? Uh, really kind of hurts. Yeah, yeah, I'm so bummed now. Uh, they're uh, unfortunately doing away with the Camaro. It's saying goodbye yeah. uh, this is a for, for now as as they like to say you know the camaro was always kind of given a bit of a rotten deck because the mustang is so damn good it has a hard time competing especially with little things like oh i don't know comfort being able to see out of it yeah, here, here's my biggest issue with this car and i yeah. love this car right but but this is this is the biggest issue you don't sit in it as much as you sit really in it right because the cow line is so tall right i mean my my arm is like at shoulder level way way high and then yeah. how look how the roof you're looking right look, at the panel I'm looking at the right yeah. right at the top of the a pillar yeah. and then this is one of the problems that chevrolet never was able to really address they it's you know form over function now now i put myself where my head would hit and my arm is even higher yeah i know and that's where the mustang trounces it and, and frankly so does the uh Dodge uh, Challenger, although the Challenger never had a convertible version that so, was available. Yeah, there's a rumor that it's going to come back as an electric car. Yeah, I'm hearing that too. And that might be really cool, but it is a shame they never were able to take it to the next step. Power-wise, they did. These things, uh, there were some beastly versions hey, that we Hey, driven. we did blow right by the uh, Z06. Oh, well, do you want to talk about that during a car podcast? No, All the, right. the Corvette Z06. Oh, the Z06. Yeah. <laughs> That's kidding. We did blow right um, by it. So, Look at the front of this thing. <laughs> I'd be terrified to drive this around any mall. 148,000 as tested. 148? Supercharged, obviously, right? Yeah. V8. Uh, as quick and as, I think, beautiful and as um, performance-oriented as any Ferrari for half the cost. I, I think that Chevy just doesn't get enough credit for the Corvette, especially the new mid-engine Corvette, right? The, the Europeans have this, like, bias toward Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bentleys, but the Corvette will keep up or it will overtake beat them. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say, and I'm going to go on record saying this, that for the past 10 years, Corvettes have been performing as well, if not better, than their European counterparts doing it for less money. Yeah, so, and, so I really want to actually get the E-Ray. Yeah. So that's that, that's kind of in my back of my head is when that comes out at the end of the year, I would love to be able to get one of those for a long-term review. Uh, should we talk about uh, the Suburban? We've, we've seen an awful lot of Suburbans. You know, this is the Trailblazer over here. Yeah. And there's one over there right over the cameraman's shoulder. Um, I really think it's a lot better than people give it credit for. I like it better than the Big Blazer that they have. I hate the <laughs> Blazer. This is a really good economical all-wheel drive decent and snow vehicle that once, tommy's taken off road once again another car like the bolt that doesn't get enough credit uh, so let me let me show you some news that broke this week okay all right uh, so uh sema concept but this is the interesting one this is the tundra trail hunter right it and, is a trail hunter and so we think that this will live above the trd pro or next to or next, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Either Andre above keeps or next to. insisting that it's going to be next to, and other people have said it's going to be up and over that. Regardless, it's going to be a much more expensive vehicle than your average one. And at the same time, with the package that it has, we're talking suspension with armor, front end components, hooks. Yes, places to actually mount hooks. Yay! But what, what made news today, or yesterday, was that they leaked, Toyota, not leaked, they disclosed that they're going to be making a Tacoma version of the Trail Hunter. So think about the Tundra and then think about what that means when Toyota comes out with the Tacoma version of this. So a lift, bigger tires, obviously more off-roady. Another way to look at this is like this could be the Overlander 
Yeah. And the TRD Pro. Is the more off-roady, hardcore. Rock yeah. crawler, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what they're going to do with their Tacoma, and I suspect we're going to see that with the upcoming 4Runner and other large Toyota-based vehicles. You think there'll be a Trail Hunter 4Runner? Yeah. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I'm almost positive, because why not? More money, right? Right. People will buy it. Speaking of what people want to buy. Supra? New. No? Nope, in front of the Supra, my friend. The Crown? Not the Crown. Oh, the GR. Let's go look at that. All right. Crying out loud. So I fell in love with this car when they gave it a manual. Um, it was, yes, I hear good things. The problem I have is I don't fit. I don't either. I, I just, I look out onto the uh, yeah. top of this when I'm outside. Well, well, let's show them. So the design of this is one of the, really the biggest issues for me and for Roman is the way this cuts, looking over my shoulder when I look to the left, I can't see anything and it actually kind of affects outward vision in general and I have to bring the seat all the way back to the bulkhead which makes some squeaky noises. All right, well let's look at the GR uh, Corolla. Now I, I did get to drive that on the track. Yeah. Uh, and obviously this, you know, is... You drove a, another version of it too, didn't you? Yeah, which one is this one? Is this the core? I don't know, I can't tell. Or is this the... Uh, is this the is this the core? That's the standard, right? So this. Is, yeah, this is just the core. I believe it has the tech package and the. So um, it is the core. Okay. So so. It's got all the bells. So let, let me. Uh, I mean. Oh uh, yeah. This is the crazy part about this car. Three cylinder, three hundred horsepower, right? So a hundred horsepower per cylinder. Yeah. Which is crazy when you think about it. Small displacement, manual transmission is the only way you can get it, thank God, and it is considered to be an absolute out of the park hit for Toyota. I think that right now a lot of dealers unfortunately are putting some heavy, heavy stickers on these things, which well, is a real shame. Well, it's a perfect Colorado car because not only is it a hatchback. It's all wheel drive. It's all wheel drive, right? Uh, and it's quick and it's fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's another car that I would it's love It's legitimately love to quick. Own. A lot of people swear that this thing will eat anything that has a Subaru badge on it on a track. So, so WRX. Even the SDI. Some even people the SDI. Say, yeah. Golf R, right? Oh, yeah. And, and they started like 35, and then there's three versions. Uh, the Mizuno. Mizuno, I'm saying that right. Yeah, I, I'm, it's, I, it's, it's Akio Toyota's like track. Track name. Name, yeah. Uh, it's carbon fiber. That one, they're only making 200 of, but yeah, what a cool, more what a cool car. Respect. And, and it, it's, it's a nice um, counterbalance to the crown. <laughs> I have, I have, I'm on the fence on this crown in so many ways. So I think this kind of replaces the Avalon. It does, size-wise. Yeah. But there's a real issue that I wanted to show everybody. It, propulsion system, no problem. The fact that it's all-wheel drive, great. It's a sedan, but it's off the ground. Actually, Subaru started with that, frankly. But there's one issue. Well, it's like a lifted sedan. It's really weird. It is. Is it a crossover but it's a or is it a one. sedan? Okay, what's your issue? Show you right now. Okay. Roman, have a seat. You want me to sit in the back, okay? Yes, please. All right, we'll do. Lots of leg room, but. Okay. Is your head. Oh! Did your head just hit the top? I just hit my head. Why do you think I had you going instead of me? <laughs> oh, look at this, Ian. Look. I hit my head on this. There's no way. What is it? This is, this is, for me, one of the biggest disappointments from Toyota because, frankly speaking, they're really good at that, this. So I don't know what they were thinking with this. Look, I can go in the back of one of these. The, the BZ4X? Or, or be the flight X, and I'll be plenty comfortable because plenty of headroom. This thing, just for the sake of its yeah, shape, BZ. means back seat room for headroom. Anybody who's tall, you're in trouble. And I'm really happy that Roman hit his BZ head. BZ4X. BZ4X. I just did a video with Tommy and nobody watched. I felt bad about it, but I thought it was smart. Why are they confusing us with names? <laughs> BZ4X. Well, I, I think it stands for below zero or beyond zero. And then four means four wheel drive, and X, I think it means. Like off road E or something like that? Or all wheel drive. I don't know. I, so. I, I got a better name for it. What's that? Roy. <laughs> yeah, I would call it Roy. Yep, the Toyota Roy. I like Roy. Yeah. Roy has its imperfections, but Roy has potential. All right, I'm going to make you sit in the new Prius because once again, uh, now see that's the opposite side of it. It's another they one. They killed it with that. That's another one. I mean, look at the look of the the uh, look at look at the new Prius. I mean, it's just uh, stunning, isn't it? It's they, you know what this you know what people said this is. Hmm. Uh, this is the smartest thing I've ever heard about this is that this is the third generation Volt. Not Bolt, Volt, if Chevy had built it. Yeah, I right, get a good it. point. That's see, a really see, good see, point. See if you, no, uh, over here, driver's side. Driver's side, okay. See if this, you fit. Well, this I'm is my curious. first time sitting in one. Yeah, see if you fit in the Prius. Okay. Look how raked that front windshield is. Yep, uh, and some people don't like it and some people love it. All right, in I go. The roof is a little bit low, but once you're in, it's fine. And a seat also, somebody who's been sitting in here is not as tall as me. And there we go. So um, can you see out the front? 
I can see out of the front, but I can see how some people wouldn't like the way that the shape is because despite the rake of it, really you're only looking at a very small kind of cut image. When we were talking about the Camaro, I mean, this isn't like that, but similar type of thing in terms of a low roof. The other criticism is that this blocks the screen. Not for me. Nope. No, I'm good. Okay. If I keep it low and drive like a low rider, pimp, I'm good. Um, this layout is very simple, which I like a lot. Not a ton of buttons, but just enough toggle buttons to make me happy, personally speaking. I know some of you guys are like, oh no, keep it all on the screen. And others are like, I don't want it on the screen. I want a lot of them here. And that is what they did with a lot of the climate control components. I like that. And then the screen itself, yes, there's a volume button. They pulled it off because people in Denver can't be trusted. And the rest of this layout, fantastic. By the way, actual little gear lever that normally goes here too. So I don't know what they were drinking. What type of tea? I mean, it gets did, like 50 MPG. I know, and it looks stunning on the outside. Yeah. I would not be embarrassed. When you, when I first met Roman, he had the, well, the second gen Prius and it was, Really ugly. Really, I'm sorry, Roman, but it was. It was a little cockroach. It was. It was terrible. This is just phenomenal to look at. I would actually like looking at this car. I mean, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, like, what were they thinking when uh, somebody proposed to make it into a sexy, sporty, low-slung, you know, economy car? You know, this strikes me as one of those cars where, where the designer snuck the design like between the pages without his bosses knowing or her bosses knowing. And then suddenly somebody else saw it, the right person and said, oh, we got to build that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so let me ask you this, Nathan. Yes. Um, have you seen the new Mustang yet in person? Not in person. I think I see it over there. The, oh. the new Dark Horse. So shall, shall we head on over? I think that's it hiding under the big Ford. So I love like um, how manufacturers telegraph what's important to them, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever at the front of the uh, display, so here obviously it's the BZ4X, the Crown, the GR, and the Prius, right? Right. And then over here with Ford, I think you can tell the new Mustang is very important to them because they've got it under the big Ford sign. Yeah, yeah. So I want to get your opinion of this. On um, what, on the looks? Yeah, what, what do you think of it? I think uh, it might be the dark horse. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. You, actually, yeah, you know, yeah, it kind of yeah. looks a little bit like a Camaro from this angle. <laughs> I think I think the... It's me, the fender fair in, in the back look Camaro-ish to me a little. Is, is it just me, but are the tires too small? They look a little bit, maybe because of all the extra stuff that's hanging off the sides, yeah. it does look like that. Um, it's not exactly what I would call uh, shocking. It's a Mustang, that I know. So I think the configurator and order banks open this week. That's yes. big news. Yes, that's what I heard as well. Yeah. So you're going to be able to order something like this. Dark Horse is, of course, very limited run. It's too. very expensive. Yeah, extraordinarily expensive. But Mustang has done something that nobody else has managed to do. They've captured that lightning in the bottle and they've been able to regurgitate it for years and years. The question is, do enough people like this design? The front end, I've heard a lot of people having issues with the lower chin design, yeah. saying it's just too big and it looks almost like a truck. I've heard people say that. Well, what I love about that is that they're keeping the Coyote, right? Yes. Like we were just with Camaro and we're saying that might go electric. Yeah. Here we still have a good old V8 muscle yeah. car. And the, we agree that the Coyote is one of the best V8s that's out there in its class. Yeah, uh, sure. In trucks and cars, you name it. It's a really, really good engine. They've updated it. Uh, I believe they've lightened some of the materials that they've been using. And on top of that, it's actually a little bit more efficient while putting out more horsepower. All right, well, let's keep going this way. Okay, so keep on going. Keep going this way. And, uh, we're we're going to ignore the trucks. Is yeah, it's... there's a Mach-E over here as well. Uh, they haven't changed it this year as far as I know. Other than I think they've done some upgrades to the infotainment. I love the color. I'm a big, it's a nice color. I'm a big I would fan agree. of that, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, of course, there's the other car well, you could have bought. Well, this is actually one of the winners of truck. the RMAP Truck of the Year. RMAP is a Rocky Mountain Automotive Press Association that Roman and I both at one point were presidents of. And they chose the Maverick as Truck of the Year. And rightfully so. It's yep. a really good vehicle. Unfortunately, you can't get it. You really are going to struggle probably until 2024 to get one. Yeah. So I like this color on, on the this Ranger? Ranger, except for the wheels, yeah. Yeah, well, you yeah, know, new one's coming, so. Well, yeah, I think it's the final hurrah. All right, so All right. We'll, we'll kind of zip past Toyota here uh, yep. and then head over to Honda. Let's see, oh, wait, we got uh, Kia. Kia. Oh, what do you think of the mat? I just <laughs> saw one in, I saw one in the wild yesterday, you know, and I think it's way cool. I mean, when Matt Finishes originally came out, I yeah. kept thinking that, wow, you guys used primer. 
What's yeah. up with that? Now Matt is starting to look a lot more silky and it's actually really kind of created its own world. And I still say that the Kia V, the, the, Kia, the Kia V is what I called it, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Kia EV6 is one of the best looking vehicles in its class. It's phenomenal to look at. I don't like sitting in it as much as its brother, which is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. This is not as comfortable for me, but it's still extraordinary. Great technology, great driver, and really cool looking. You know, both Kia and Hyundai are just hitting out of the ballpark. Absolutely. Just out of the ballpark. Every car they build, and probably, you know, a good example of that is this car right there. Oh, well, I mean, they can't, the fact that this one's even on the floor is surprising that someone hasn't snatched it up. <laughs> someone hasn't bought it yet. Because they're just so damn popular. Yeah, uh, Ian, you should show the interior, because this is like, you know, an interior that BMW would be proud of. Uh, do you like the Telluride better or do you like the Palisade better? I like the Telluride oh, a little too, bit better. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's a little less uh, convoluted with its design. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, look at this interior, Nathan. Uh, look, at, look, look, look at the stitching. I mean, it's just phenomenal. I'm a sucker for this kind of cappuccino colored interior as well. All the buttons. Thank you for not making an all black interior, which is it, it's so good. much more playful and airy and the light bounces better. Yeah, and so we've driven these several times. They've always driven quite well. Off-road, there are better, but this one's still decent. And they do have a package that you can get, um, which will give you beefier tires and a slight lift in the front, a few other things. Uh, you've driven that, I believe. I have, yeah. If I were cool, I'd make you in the back seat, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not doing that, because I'm, honest, I'm not very flexible today. You know, um, these three-row crossovers SUVs are really having a moment in the sun right now. Oh my God, they're selling like hockey, hotter than ever before. Yeah, people all, people want these things, and this is probably the poster child for the one that I would I would pick. Well, this is one of Kia's best sellers, bar none. I mean, they're, yeah, some of their other vehicles sell quite well, but this has been a surprise success, and they just can't build enough of them. I am curious to when they're going to start speaking, building a hybrid or plug-in hybrid. The direct competitor to it is right across the way. Yeah, which the, I think is on purpose. Yeah, all hey, right. how's it going? Big fan. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it, thank you. Sorry, we're just shooting right now. Yeah, uh, um, so, so direct competitor, Toyota, of course, came out with this as a, as a response to that, right? They well, tried to, yeah. They tried to take a Highlander and make it a little bit grander, calling it the Grand Highlander, pretty straightforward. Yeah, essentially, they just they tacked on a longer rear end. They gave it more booty. Oh, by the way, we forgot to mention, at the end of this video, we are going to show you uh, Smart. There's a new Smart. And they've got in a very strange direction, Nathan. They have gone in an unusual direction. Smart is back. Yeah, remember a little Smart car? Stay tuned for Stay that. Stay tuned at the end, because yeah. it's, it's very unusual. It's, it's bold, I would. It, it is bold. bold uh, yeah. Less room, but a little but bit more, more power. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, so uh, Grand Highlander, uh, vehicle is locked, so we can't show the interior. Uh, we haven't driven this one yet. No, we haven't. We actually have a, right in front of our uh, studio, we have the regular Highlander. Um, this is not only for direct competition for what the Koreans are doing, but also for Nissan because their Pathfinder is selling quite well. Uh, they are looking at uh, building a vehicle that you can actually put adults in the third row. And I believe we put a few of our people in the third row of one of these. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit roomier than you think. Now, what's nice about this is it's actually bigger than this, which is weird. Right? Yeah. But uh, you think, actually, no, I thought that was bigger than that. I, Are you no, talking about the Sequoia? Where's the Sequoia? I can't find the Sequoia. I'm, I, I, I pointed to uh, yeah, everything Foreigner, but the, yeah, you've, a Tundra. I'm surprised you haven't pointed anyway, it's to bigger the bigger than the Sequoia. RAV4. Yeah. Right, let's keep going. Let's go to Nissan. Okay. Uh, this, obviously, cool colors. Uh, hopefully, we're getting a new one if and when the Tacoma comes out. I think a two year years. After that. Yeah. I think it's going to be two years. And look, of course, you've got my favorite car. Yes. The Z. This is, well, this is another winner of the uh, Rocky Mountain Automotive Press Association's Car of the Year, the Nissan Z, and rightfully so, because it's just freaking spectacular to look at. I think it's just a phenomenal car to drive, and I really would want one if I was in the market for something different, something that's a little bit on the uh, twin turbocharged V6, by the way. Really, really cool car. 400 <laughs> horsepower, right? Yeah, the only problem with it is it's rear wheel drive. Not, not it's, a grand. It's not a problem. Uh, Colorado, come it, on. It, it does, but. I think if you have this, you probably have a <coughs> winter car as well. <laughs> okay. What do you so, think? Well, yeah, if I could afford this, I would have a winter car as well. I'd, I'd park this proudly next to my old, um, yeah, Jeep or something like that, whatever. Now, um, while Roman's coughing, he choked on, I, I think he had a cocktail off camera. Wanted to show you something else. Over here, there it is, Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek. Now we've actually taken this off-road 
and we've driven in a few of these. Now before, the old Rock Creek was just a badge with some color, and it was really disappointing. This is totally different. Nissan actually really did pull some strings to make this happen, and smart, because, look, not everybody's gonna take one of these off-road, but the idea that you can do that is huge, and that's a seller. Yeah. So tires, wheels, colors, interior, suspension, and armor. Yeah, it's great, I love it. Yeah, it really is quite good. Love and nine-speed automatic transmission, thank you. And, you know, speaking of that, you can't speak of that without speaking of that. Yeah, we might as well go over to the, that. The, you know, the, the new trail-rated pilot. It's not trail-rated. Well, they're calling it. They can't call it trail-rated because then Jeep would sue them. Well, they're calling it a trail sport. Trail sport. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. So what would you call that? You, call, you can't say rated, so it's trail. Capable. Emboldened, <laughs> embodied. Trail happy. But, but basically, that's a direct, uh, you know, uh, reaction uh, to the, the Nissan, right? Same thing. So what automakers have been doing, this is including Volkswagen, is they've been adding some components to these vehicles to make them a little bit more off-road capable. And there is absolutely no reason why a vehicle like this can't handle a medium difficulty trail. Ian, Ian you gotta show, you gotta look. Check out, the, check out the interesting recovery point. Look underneath. Now, by the way, in the very near future, I'm going to be driving one of these from Colorado through Moab all the way down to Arizona for the uh, Overland Expo, where I'm going to be joined by Andre. So this will go down there and do some serious off-roading along the way. In fact, Roman wants me to take it over to Fins and Things, which for a crossover is going to be pretty challenging. Tommy It'll be took it up some of the harder Colorado trails, yeah. and he was impressed. Well, there's armor underneath, so that's why I feel okay about it. If there wasn't, then a bumper might go. They are getting busier. I think uh, senior lunch specials are over. <laughs> oh, dang, dude. So Audi, um, they all kind of look too much alike now. Except for one, Except which I don't think is here. The e-tron uh, GT. GT. Yeah. One of my favorite cars uh, ever. There it is. You can oh. see it. The sedan. Oh, I just want to bite the back of my hand. <laughs> it's so pretty. So e Audi's one of the first companies actually to, to, to go almost all electric, right? Mm -hmm. So they're quickly converting all their cars to electricity. Well, the, without a lot of fanfare. Yeah. You now, know. The, the All Road, of course, is a very popular car here. Um, really expensive. Very expensive. But let's face it, this is not really an All Road. It's more of a soft road. Yeah, but it's yeah. still very capable in the snow. It's, it's, it's a cool. proper Quattro and it's, system. And it's, it's a wagon. Yes. Which is, you know. Unusual. I think it's really the only wagon out there in this class right now in the United States. Yeah, I mean, in Europe you can still get them, but here. Yeah, wagons. because the Europeans are smarter and they have better hair, I know. All right, how about Mazda? What do you yes. got? What do you think of Mazda? Phenomenal design on there now. I would love, to, uh, uh, another car I'd love to own is a Miata. I don't fit. <coughs> I think they have four Mazdas here. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. They're, why are they plugged in? I don't know. Maybe, Maybe they're going to run the TV off of it? This is uh, the big one, right? Yeah, this, this is, is a CX-90. Yeah. This is the one we just reviewed. Yeah. Let me check it out. I haven't seen it up close. Mazda absolutely scored a hit. Honestly, Mazda, um, we, 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 our producer, who's also our editor, uh, Zach and I both agree that it's one of the most unsung heroes out there. I've owned four Mazdas. He's owned, I think, three. And here comes the lady talking. Don't worry about her. 61,000. Think about what it gives you in that interior, how beautiful that interior is. That is absolutely worth it. You know, Mazda and Volvo live in kind of the same space, right? Yeah, but I think Mazda does it better in that respect. But Volvo is better with doing charging. Now, they are going to start doing more and more uh, hybrids with Mazda. But, I mean, this is a properly good-sized vehicle, competing directly with vehicles like everything from the Nissan Pathfinder all the way up to Audis and, well, maybe, uh, I'll tell you, Acura. They're not, they're not going to do an all-road version of it, though, are they? No, but they did do something like that here with their CX-50. Yep, they made that a little bit more rugged. A little bit more rugged. They got, the, they got the, like the side. They got the side, side thing going on. Uh, Articulation's good. Their all-wheel drive systems are some of the best in the business. I won't even accept an argument there because they are really good. Predictive all-wheel drive systems going along with the fact that they handle better than most cars in their class. You know, well, this is one of those companies that every automotive journalist loves. But and they, yet, they're just, they're, their sales they, are horrible. They have four cars here, right? Right. Well, that's the other thing, is that Mazda dealerships are outgunned by even smaller uh, automakers, like three to one. And that's one of the issues, is that you just don't have enough dealerships or service in the United States, and that's a real issue. Now, I know here, that from a perspective that I used to own them. We're here at Dodge. Oh, course. yeah. Uh, you know, Say goodbye to the Charger, say goodbye to the Challenger, right? All being oh, replaced. So but it's want, good to look at now. If you want one, buy them now before they go away, before the e-muscle cars. Do you notice how much younger 
the uh, crowd is here in the Dodge area. I'm, I mean, look, they're, they were sucking on you know canned corn over there. Over here, younger crowd. Why? Because they still fantasize about these cars. What do you think of the Hornet? Um, okay, now that I've driven it several times, yeah. uh, and I've driven every type, I'm gonna say that uh, I'll give it a seven out of 10. Okay. But only the GT, the uh, RT, which is their plug-in hybrid version, that's more like a five. It's, it really irritated me because of its price. Yeah, and we just had a kind of a failure with Tommy Slip Test, which on a pre-production unit, so we'll certainly retest that again, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, they're, and they're not built for off-road or anything like that. What they're built for is actually sort of, think about it as a WRX that sits high. A lot of horsepower coming out of a turbocharged power plant, both the plug-in hybrid and the regular version are really, really powerful and pretty damn capable on the street. And I want to ask our viewers, we're, we're kind of tossing back the idea of doing another cheap Jeep series, right? We're <laughs> yeah. going by a cheap Jeep. So we're thinking about getting like maybe three or four. So maybe a Patriot, maybe a Liberty, right? I think the Renegade's a little too expensive. It still isn't old enough. Yeah, but maybe the Compass. Maybe the Compass and maybe a Commander. Oh. You guys want to see that? And then taking them to Moab and seeing which one of them is the most off-road worthy and which one of them we can squeeze Nathan into. You know, yeah, that would be funny too within itself. I, I can't wait till we talk to Toby and we put him on a lift and he's like, guys, they all leak. They will all leak, of course. <laughs> they can all leak. Uh, <laughs> so Jeep, of course, just unveiled. <clears throat> I was in Moab for that, the new, uh, well, the refreshed version of the JL. Right. I'm betting these are not the new ones. I don't think these are the new ones, are No, they? so what they're doing is they're putting a bigger screen, um, they're uh, giving it power seats, Nathan. Yeah, they're power seats, but I don't think they give you any more space. Than they don't the... give you any more space, but if you're like stuck, let's say on a hill and you need to move your seat up, you can actually do it as opposed to and, Until to the batteries disconnect or you lose all power, then you're not moving what you, anything. What do you think of this color? I like the color. I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally drive around in purple, but I am a Prince fan. Yeah. And yet I am funky. So this is, uh, what's the, uh, what is yeah. this color called? So this is the 396, but this is, which version is this? It's a 392. 392, 396, yeah, so it's, a V8. That it's the Hemi, I'm trying to find the color though. All right, exterior color. Does that say 82,000? Oh, 88,000, I'm sorry. Exterior, limited edition rain exterior paint. Rain, like you rain the world? I guess. And uh, the sticker on these is, how much is the sticker on that 392? 89,000, Nathan. Yeah, that's um, that's a that's a bitter pill to swallow. But then again, oh, and only those look like they're thirty threes. No, those are at least thirty fives. Yeah. Those are thirty fives at least. You know, forty is a new uh, thirty seven. Uh, yeah, I just that, that's just going too far. Really? Yeah, I think so. I oh. think thirty seven is the max. Oh, it gives you such a cushy ride. Well, I if think... they put thirty sevens on my power wagon, that'd be even another reason for me to feel bad about not owning one. Can I show you the best looking car here? Yes. It's straight ahead. It's a Lexus. Oh yeah, but the color's wrong, and you and I agree on that. Yeah, I agree. But the Lexus, uh, <sighs> I just actually had it in Florida. Uh, LC, what a place to have it. LC five hundred convertible. It, did you have the convertible in Florida? Yes. Oh, I hate it. In you. bright yellow. So our friend Moto Man yep. owned one. And his was like a maroon. Oh, oh, I love that Bronco, by the way. That's the really cool. Edition. Let's hit that in a second. Yeah. But let's see what you talked about it. And yeah, the surprise, Heritage Edition is really surprise, cool. Surprise, we have a retiree checking it out. <laughs> You're just stereotyping cars. I know, but I'm looking at what's there. Just knock it off. <laughs> knock it off, David. <laughs> okay. But the LC is still one of the best looking, not only the best looking Lexus built, one of the best looking Toyota products built. And you can get it in V8. And you can get in the V8. I think that this is one of the best looking Japanese vehicles built next to the 2000 GT. I agree. It's, it's just phenomenal. I think it's the best looking car here. The, the problem with it when I had it was, it kind of writes a check it can cash, right? Really? It's only got like 400 horsepower. Oh, gee. And it looks much, I mean, today when-, when But it's a know, GT car. Yes, I know, but still, like for 112,000, which is the one I had, you want it like 500. How much is this guy? Is their price? 100 and no, 4.6, which is fine. 400, is fine. 471 That's horsepower. So I'm wrong. 471, uh, as shown, 112,000. That was close. Yeah, um, and people are making money by buying these and flipping them right now because right. they're so rare. Are right, we two different flavors of Bronco? Well, this I know it's flavor, flavor I like. at the Everglades. This is a really good package that is soup, like totally yeah, going under the radar. I heard it's not selling because it's only available with a small engine. Which is still fine. 
Right, but most people want the big engine. Yeah, because they want to go faster on the streets, but off-road with the, the right gearing, this thing is actually the but vehicle this, you this want. This is the one I would get, but I love the uh, Heritage too. Isn't this cool? So come yeah. over here and check out it. From the front and the side, you can really see. I think Ford was brilliant by doing this. So 35 as shown yeah. with steelies. Well, they're not real steelies either. No? No, these are the ones that look like steelies, but they're, I think they're aluminum or something like that. So yeah, go ahead and hit it with your finger. You, you can tell. Give it a little knock. Yeah, they're fake steelies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, but it looks cool, and that's the point. So they don't bend. I, I still say that the Ford Bronco Sport is one of my favorite vehicles in the class. They've been selling out left and right for good reason. They get good mileage. If you get the right one, they do pretty decent off-road, and they're a good family car. How much do you think the Everglade costs? Uh, that one's probably 65. Let me go look. I'm a curious. <laughs> I don't know. I could be totally wrong. It comes with a winch, by the way. Huh? It comes with a winch. Oh, so the winch? It comes with it. Uh, okay. From the factory. I said 65. No, nope, you're wrong. 57. 57. Wow. Yeah. That's MSRP. That's way less than I thought. You know, if I were to get one, I get in this color. I like the color. In this configuration. Oh, you know, Tommy would make fun of you. No, he loves it. He, no, he would say what's hearing aid beige or whatever. He loves saying that about anything that's not green. All right, let me show you a crazy color over right. here. So, you know, manufacturers usually when they unveil a car have a hero color. Yeah. Right? That's the color they think it looks best in or gets the most attention in or gets the most publicity in. And of course, the new RX just came out and this is their hero color. What do you think? Uh, like I think my wife would love it. Yeah? It's not my type of color, well, this personally. This is a 500H. It's like a champagne yeah. rose. It's like a copper bronzy color. Very bold. Yeah, but I'm not seeing anything listed here on the color of the actual vehicle. So I forgot what it's called. Copper Crest, that's right. Thank copper you very much. Copper Crest. You know your product. And what's your name? Tracy. Tracy, thank you, thank Tracy. you very much. Appreciate yeah. the help. What What do you think of the schnoz? It's as bad as... I think Tracy's schnoz is fine. No, no, no. Not Tracy's schnoz. Oh, the, the car. <laughs> yeah, so one of the things they did was they actually went and integrated this design here. Yeah. And then they, look how they did like a melted plastic style where they hint about it here, then they have a little open section here, and then it goes to this grill, meaning that they actually shrunk down their somewhat iconic um, hourglass shape in the front. And this is the face of the new Lexus, according to Lexus themselves, that they're going to be converting, well, obviously they're going to electric, and you're going to see more and more of this in the near future. So there's three versions of this, right? Right. Uh, the one that I got to drive, which is coming next year, it's the plug-in hybrid. Right. And that's the one I probably wait for. Is that for. the 350H? Plug-in hybrid. You... No, that's the 400H. 350. Yeah. yeah, 350. Ah, okay. And then and there's a the regular hybrid. Anyway, that's the one I'd wait for. You notice they still have the spindle. It just goes up to here. Yep. So they, but it's all yeah. covered up with this little exactly. thing here as a design um, element. You won't have any. That's the electric over there. You won't have any of the grill. We'll give you uh, some uh, product information. But from, it'll from look, the yeah. Person. So the electric one is over here, Roman. Oh, all right. No, that's the 200. Look. Oh, yeah, that, that's that, yeah. So this is, yeah. 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 So basically, this is the Lexus version of the BZ4X, right. yeah. Exactly. You guys know where the spindle shape comes from? Uh, well, aside from the, uh, did we talk to Lexus about that? I don't know. I'm guessing it's a spindle. It's a manufacturing company, so it's in the shape of a spool of thread. Spool of thread, gotcha. <laughs> right, which makes sense considering that the interior components, many of them are handmade. Exactly. Wait, 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 look, 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 look at that cane. Or, that is the flashiest. Yeah, you are. Are you okay? Yeah, you are. I was paralyzed 11 years in a wheelchair. This time I never walked again. Oh, oh, well, congratulations yeah. on the walking, too. Congratulations. That's fantastic. And that, is, and then that bling is bold. Yeah. very right. good. Shall we keep going, guys? We're going to keep on going. Please enjoy. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, that's, of course, the electric version of the BZ4X. Um, and the problem with that one and the BZ4X is they're like one generation behind. Right? They are. At yeah. range is range really wise, the biggest, yeah. It's like realistically 220. And let's face it, like I said, 40 is a new 37s. 300 is a new 200. Okay. And this right here is the reason why Lexus and Toyota are panicking. Uh, they should be. They, they should be because when, now before this, now remember, Hyundai has been doing electric cars for a little while, but they weren't really putting anything on the radar. Then the Ionic 5 came out and we've driven the hell out of them. In fact, I, I dare say that we've driven, for journalists, more Ionic 5 than anybody else out there. Cross country, back and forth. And they're really good, really, really good. They have the range, they have the 800 volt architecture. You can get them all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. They are- I mean, look, you've, you've got like, you know, a couple different ingredients that go into a good EV, right? right? First you got styling and they're gorgeous, right? So the Pixel 
uh, design language. Really I, I works, just, yeah, really I, I works well, right? retro Pic thing. Pixel design language. Then, then you've got the technology. It's it's 800 volt architecture. Yep. Unlike 400 volt, which is charges you know, quickly yep. at the right charger. Really, there's only one flaw that I found on it. What's that? Right no here. No wiper. Everybody hates the fact there's no wiper. There is no rear wiper back there, yeah. my friends. So that is one of the things, and they swear that the aerodynamics means that it'll push away, it but I was in the middle of the I've desert. I've so many times. Yeah, and I actually had to take my cup of coffee and splash it on the back so I could see out of the back and wipe it down. But if that's the only flaw, think about how good it actually is, because you know me, I'll gripe about a car for and, and, weeks. And, and, Hyundai, if you're watching, the, that wasn't the one you lent us. Obviously, that was your brother's, right, Nathan? Yeah, it was, it was my brother's. That was your brother's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Right. Not well, the, come on, you were pour coffee on a, on a Well, because vehicle. I needed to see, come on. All right, let's look at this couple of other Hyundai products, which All right, is just right here. let's look at a couple other ones. Uh, the EV6 uh, is not here. Ionic 6, I mean. I don't see an Ionic 6. No, that's a good point. And it's also confusing, EV6, Ionic 6. Well, that's one of the problems. Yeah. The, the naming culture confusing. right now that's going on has been a nightmare for a lot of people. And you went to Germany, I believe, to look at a, the new Konas. Am I yeah, correct? That's the old one. Yes. That is not the new one. It's actually good looking wheels on it, I gotta say. It is a good looking wheel. Uh, and here's your favorite vehicle, of course. Well, it's not my favorite, but no. it's definitely something that I would be willing to buy. This is what I would buy. I've driven, driven the Kona and Nathan. Yeah, and I've driven many of these, and I'm willing to crawl underneath it and remove the rear trailer uh, harness <laughs> to right. take you, it with me so I can put it on mine because I don't want to wait six months. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't give it back to you. They kept it. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to read or hear about that story, head on over to All TFL where we just recorded the truck podcast mm -hmm. and we talked about Nathan's travails on getting his uh, hitch. Uh, Wiring harness. Yeah, sorted. it was a recall, and I'm still very ticked about it, if you couldn't tell. Before, and I'm sure many before, of you guys are, too. Before we go to the Smart, let's go over to Volkswagen. I think oh, they're, yeah. they're around the corner. So we're going to go up and around. Now, one of the cool things about transitioning to some electric vehicles is the fact that having indoor test courses are very, very easy to do oh. because you don't have to worry about emissions and killing the people that are in here while they're driving cars. You could yeah, go so out there and drive cars. So let's see what electric vehicles we have. So we have uh, the Lightning. Yep. We have the Mustang Mach-E, Mach -E. and we have the ID4. Now, I wanted to mention something about the ID4 and Volkswagen in general, and that is that um, I'm going to be going out to New York very soon, probably shortly after you see this, and I'm going to be trying out the ID7. Wow, that's right, New York. That's yeah. that's right. Yay! Yeah, me and yeah, I'm, I'll be there as well, uh, doing a yet undisclosed vehicle from a yet undisclosed manufacturer. So we'll both be there on two different programs. Roman really wants to go out there and keep an eye on me, and I promised him that I wouldn't get arrested this time. So. Well, let's go. Let's, it, go, let's, let's go keep back. going. Oh, let's go this way then. All yeah, because right. there's no, nothing in there. There's nothing in there. Uh, this is actually where you queue up to drive the cars. So not all auto shows do this, by the way. Um, but once again, it's one of the benefits of having electric vehicles that you can actually drive indoors. They do sometimes have off-road courses at some auto shows. They used to do that here, and those shows would allow for exhaust to be like sucked up in the vents so you could drive one car at a time. Nathan, I see people gathering around the new smart car. Ah, I, yes. I think I think they have created quite a stir with their with their new direction. Well, it's a new type of hybrid. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's, so it's, a, it's a gas engine mixed in with a jet engine. engine. It's the kind of hybrid I can most certainly endorse, unless I'm driving it. Check this out: a jet engine in a smart car, Nathan. I think they're going to rename it the V2 or the V3, <laughs> maybe. I think well, that would be a bad idea. Okay. Well, well, you do have a fuel cell back here. Come show them. Come on closer, Ian. Yeah, have, have a look inside. Huh. Yeah, uh, the passenger capacity has dropped down. Uh, and so uh, is cargo half. capacity. Uh, but but I'm, I'm assuming speed and quickness have increased exponentially. Yeah, and I'm guessing that if you wanted to run cold air into this thing, you'd just fire up the AC on high. So um, it's... Um, it's got a fire extinguisher. That's good. <laughs> I don't think you have much time if would, it went. Sign up for the test drive on this one. Yeah, exactly. Would, wouldn't this melt the... <laughs> no, not at all, because the heat's really, this is, the heat is proportional. It's actually the hottest part is like right here. Um, but, oh look, Roman, they're probably going to sell it. It smells a little... Um, jet fuel -y. Yeah, exactly. A little jet fuel -y. Look at the, look at the little, uh, like, controls on this thing. I like, I like the shifter on top of the shifter. Yeah, that is something that you don't see every day. Once no. again, Smart has gone a different direction. They, they certainly have. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Smart's new direction. And speaking <laughs> of uh, a new direction, uh, there's an Alfa Romeo here I've never actually heard of, which is well, not it, unusual, I guess, but certainly surprising. I think it's a Zagato design that we're looking at here, and it's not something that's very common. And I'm pretty sure that given its age, it was just shipped in it's, recently. It's the S.Z. 
Did that foretell the future or did it, uh, did it herald a tragic past in design? Well, if memory serves, this is a Zagato vehicle that was transferred into the absolute lightest I version I, I of the I know nothing about this. I like the Rear nose. drive, turbocharged four-cylinder engine, I think, but I really don't have a lot of information on it. This is the unique uh, portion of the car show where, you know. We got the cars where we're like, I really don't know what the hell it is. Now, let me show you another one that's oh, pretty, pretty yeah, crazy. That's... You, got, you got to check out this Rolls Royce. This is, I would call this the Barbie doll Rolls Royce. This is where we need Motorman. I'm, I'm so because of Barbie doll? No, I, because he, he would love he, that. He, he knows all these exotics, right? Ah. I mean, here we have uh, McLarens, uh, we have uh, Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Yeah, uh, but this Rolls Royce is, look, look at this Rolls Royce. Look at the color on that, Nathan. Not, not the blue one. I'm talking about the, 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 the sky the, blue, powder blue, baby powder blue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look, look, look at the crowd of people gathered around it. So color there's sells something cars. to be said for, for being a little bit outlandish. I love the suicide doors. You want to take a peek inside, Ian? Show them the inside of that thing. Hey, fast car lane. Hey, thank love you. you guys. Oh, thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Want to show them the inside of it? Let's see what they did on the inside. They had to make the inside unique, too. Well, yeah, so they used a lot of, uh, I don't know, what, leather? And more leather, and then uh, yeah, with, additional from, leather. From, like, virgin cows. My, my biggest issue is the wheels are way too small, and the tires are way, way, way too small. I would have gone. Yeah, but they got a white line on them. I know. The white walls, maybe. Maybe, maybe it's just maybe it's just dropped. Maybe it's slammed. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think so. I think it's probably got an adjustable suspension. Skillet color? What would you call this? The, this blue? Yeah. Yeah, I call it powder blue. Powder blue, yeah. Yeah, definitely Barbie doll color. Well, if you want to be noticed, yes, this is the right car for you. Skittle color, not skillet. Skittles. Ah. That's a, uh, here we have the DB. Did, uh, well, didn't you drive this? I did. There's a funny story behind that. <laughs> it is a really Can funny story. Can I tell story. you this funny story? Yeah, go so, for it. So uh, Aston Martin flew me all the way to Sardinia to drive this car. Uh, and you think that'd be quite exciting. Yeah. Except we were there in the off season, which was in March. And when we got there, keep in mind, this is a car in 23s with summer tires and 700 horsepower, right? Yeah. So we got there, it first started raining, then it started blowing, and then started snowing. <laughs> so I was there basically in the middle of a snowstorm. And I came back. And there were all these other like YouTubers there, like the guys from Cars of London, right? Mm -hmm. And they were all showing me pictures. They were all like, check this out, look at that, a DB07, DBX707 in the snow. And I was thinking to myself, dude, I could have done that 20 minutes from my house <laughs> in March. I didn't need to fly all the way to you know, Italy to grab one in the winter. Hi. How you doing? I'm Roman, nice to meet you. Uh, I know you, okay. man. It's good seeing you. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, it's just a shock. Nathan, oh. nice to meet you. Yeah. Good to see you too, Nathan, man. Keep following up those videos. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. I think these are our people. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, that and when we go to expos and whatnot, especially Overland Expo, there are a lot of our people there too. All right, well, so, I think um, we've kind of done the whole show. I mean, unless we want to jump into some and, and Alfa Romeo. Our friend Nick would certainly appreciate us talking about Alfa Romeo. Yeah. Um, now, Alfa Romeo, we, uh, we are going to be driving more of them in the near future. Um, all right, all right. We can end on this one. What do you think of that color? Well, that's similar to the other one, except for it's a satin finish. Yeah. And yeah. then you've got Matt the finish. Yeah. orange. I, I'm not too sure about the orange part. Huh? It's certainly very out there. Yeah. I, I can't read what it says. Something F. Oh, don't say it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> you can show it, Ian. Maybe somebody else can figure out what. I don't know if that's a good word or not. I don't know if that's a good word. I think or it says or... Traberto. Uh, Traberto. Bad things about Traberto. Tra yeah. Anyway, um, this in the near future is going to become a huge electric brand too. Maserati is already talking about shifting a lot of their vehicles to electrification in one way or another. That's going to happen in the near future. Well, guys, uh, thank you for joining us. As always, uh, we really had fun walking around the show and kind of giving you our unique take. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you're interested, uh, Andre will be back next week. So I will uh, be on the car channel with Nathan and Andre will be doing more of the trucks. And remember, go to altfl.com if you want to see all the stuff we talked about. See you next time, guys. Ciao.